When it comes to the best bang for the buck mini ready to run rock crawler, it's gonna be hard to beat this. This is the new Furitech Fury Wagon, and it's based off the Hobby Plus CR18, but Furitech has reworked it. They've changed some components so it's lighter. They've put brushless electronics in it so it's super smooth. And from a performance standpoint, it's gonna be hard to beat. For those of you who are familiar with the CR18, a lot of this is probably gonna look familiar. I've never used one myself. I'm just going off of what I've seen in videos, but there definitely seems like there's the great, the good, and room for improvement in the platform. And Furitech has definitely pushed it up a notch, adding some of their upgrades to this truck to make it the first brushless ready to run that you can buy. Although they did release the Cayman Pro, which was brushless. It was about $400. This truck is about $200, so you're definitely getting a lot for the dollar in a truck that's equipped with brushless out of the box. Now on the Fury Wagon, just like on the CR18, you're gonna get the portal axles on the front and the rear. There's all metal gears used throughout. And there's the same oversized 1.2 inch tall tires on here with the beadlock wheels accessible from the back side. And the wagon body may look familiar, but it is a bit different. It still has the rack with the four lights on there that you can plug into the receiver and activate the lights, but it is a different body style slightly. The front bumper also looks pretty dang similar, but that is different as well. Now underneath the body, that's where things really start looking different for the Fury Wagon. For one, it's a servo on axle truck. So it seems to be the same servo as used with the other trucks. It's pretty dang snappy and torquey, but it is placed right on the front axle, which gives you a four link suspension on the front and rear axle. With that servo up front, Furitech has moved the electronics to the back. The receiver and the speed controller sit out back with the battery now placed low inside this chassis rails. And these are Furitech aluminum H3 chassis rails and they're super stiff and rigid and there's no flex coming out of these chassis rails. This battery is a 2S 600 milliamp hour and it is included along with a USB style battery charger. Now the motor and ESC combo are brushless from Furitech and this is the Venom brushless outrunner motor. And it's pretty tiny and it's lightweight, but it is super smooth. The speed controller is the Lizard Pro from Furitech and it comes with the built-in Bluetooth module so you can use their app to make different programming changes. The combo of that motor and ESC are just exceptionally smooth and on the bottom end, it's just crazy how precise and slow you can get that motor to move. The shocks are another area that's been upgraded. They are a plastic threaded body shock with an aluminum cap and an aluminum threaded collar on the top, but they are oil filled. And for mini crawler shocks, they actually feel pretty dang nice. The collars are all the way up right now, but when you set it down, the truck does sag and settle just a little bit. Now these upgraded aluminum chassis rails is an LCG design to put the transmission, which is single speed, and the battery at the lowest point in the chassis. And the chassis rails also have tons of adjustability, as you can see. There's lots of different shock mounting holes if you wanna lay your shocks down. Now the way the layout is configured with the electronics and this battery down center, it seems like the rear end is heavier than the front, but the truck is really well balanced. It feels almost 50-50. This motor here here is so tiny that it seems like there's not much weight in the front, but there is. We threw this truck on the corner weight system with the battery installed and without the body, the truck actually has a front end bias of 54%. And you can see the overall weight of the truck is just over 340 grams. Now when we do this again with the body on, the weight bias in the front drops down a little bit to 52%. It's almost a perfect 50-50 and the overall weight is about 394 grams. The one area with room for improvement, it's kind of a bummer to find out about these platforms, is that they come with bushings. That's definitely a big area for improvement. For people who are gonna drive this truck in cleaner environments, probably not gonna be an issue. But if you drive more outside, or you plan on having this truck for a really long time, a ball bearing upgrade for this truck is going to be a really worthy investment. But overall, from a performance standpoint, the truck is really dialed. And it's probably the most dialed mini crawler that's come out of the box that I've seen at least. You've got the weight in the chassis down low, the servo on the axle is down low, the four-link suspension, the aluminum rails are really stiff. 
The body is like a high clearance design with almost no fender, so the tires don't rub on it. It's really nice. Things I wanna try, I wanna put down the shocks and lay them down for more suspension flex, which I just wanna try and I think it would look cool, but that's not ideal for all situations. Look how much it sags. There is an issue with laying down the rear right shock though, and the nut on the back side of the rail doesn't have room to fit unless we pop up the receiver and move it back on this plate. Another issue with the flex is that sometimes as that servo on the front axle moves and bobs around, the top corner of the servo ears hit the chassis rail. So I think we can fix this and provide more clearance if we take a Dremel and just Dremel down the top corner of those ears a little bit and give it like a 45 degree angle. That's a lot better than it was before. Yeah, that's way better. Can you see how rounded off the ears are? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we know it goes really slow. It's full speed. So you didn't upgrade the chassis at it's all? Shocks. Now this wow. is how it comes out of the box. I laid the shocks down because they come standing up, but you get lots of, uh, lots of adjustability, even on the links here. The shocks are oil filled too. I like how they went with the new battery tray. They yeah. should do that with the FMS. This is supposedly like a low CG uh, mm -hmm. chassis rail design. Is and that it is, is cool how low they put flat that. Flat links. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a really flat skid plate wow. too. So the wheelbase on the, on the Fury Wagon is longer than the Defender TRX4. The wheelbase looks almost exactly the same. Yeah. And with your shocks, where you have them adjusted, it's lowered it down quite a bit, but you could probably get that same height just from adjusting your shock, shock hoops back up. Yeah, yeah. The uh, CR18. So the Furitech wheelbase is a little longer. Yeah. And then there's extra, a bunch of extra. What about waterproof? Uh, I don't know, it doesn't say, so I imagine not. Okay. This terrain here is really made for 10 scale vehicles, but if you hit your lines just right, you can make it with some of these mini trucks.
don't roll. into the grass I thought rattlesnake piece of cake so the truck and the electronics are not waterproof so you, we don't want to be getting them wet so this is this terrain is probably way gnarlier than this truck is meant for but we found some pretty mellow stuff We've never brought any smaller trucks out here. Considering that, I think this truck did pretty dang good. It performs really well, and the smooth electronics are a real nice touch when you're on the edge or on the line of climbing or descending. I think what it really could use, though, is a little bit of weight. It's a really light truck, and sometimes in the loose, fluffy stuff, it's just struggling for traction. On the rocks where it's cleaner, it does really well. But adding some wheel weights or some other type of weights down low in the, in the truck would be a really good addition. But other than that, for, was it, 200 bucks, it's a pretty dialed truck. If you drive in these type of dirty conditions a lot, a bearing upgrade kit would be a really good investment. But if it's mostly clean environments where you drive, then the bushings will probably be okay. You'll just need to oil them and clean them once in a while. But uh, overall, super cool truck. One of the best minis we've ever used and uh, definitely recommended.